Okay, hello everybody. My name is Peter and this video is sponsored by Squarespace, thankfully, because I did splurge a little bit and buy a little gadget, which you can see here. Check this out. Yes, it is a uh, wick, wick, uh, turntable. So today we're gonna look at the Moonman S5. So here it is. Doesn't it look cool? I actually bought two, so I could have one to give away, but I think I'll give them both away. Uh, as always, the link is in the description. It's on Instagram. Uh, you all know the drill by now. I won't say much more about it. If you want to win one of these, uh, check it out. By the way, if you want to see a shot of what it looks like as I'm sitting here at my desk filming these intros, you want to see a shot from behind, I have that camera set up. So a little, that's a little behind the scenes. Well, not behind the scenes, but behind me shot. All right, Moon Man. I think this pen is $25, by the way. I like it. I like their con their combination of like clear acrylic, and then they have a little bit of a colorful accent for the grip here. Look, there's even like a little jewel right there. I don't, I don't know how I feel about that. It says Moon Man Super Quality E. Is that what it says? Quality E? All right, so here's both Moon Man pens. So maybe I can get like some sort of cool infomercial glitzy montage with this turntable thing and a couple of other cameras, you know. But first, let me mention Squarespace to you because as an artist, I do recognize the value of having a website, especially when Squarespace makes it so easy to make a special space for yourself on the internet. Plus, if you want to, you can connect with your audience through special members only gated content and connect with people that way and send out newsletters and emails to people. And all of the people you connect with, Squarespace gives you lots of insights so that you can tell where people are coming from to your website, where they're going to, which part of your website they're connecting with the most and engaging with. And finally, Squarespace has lots of very customizable e-commerce templates. So it's very easy to sell your work online, whether it's just art you've made or maybe a, a bill for your design services. So check it out now. Go to squarespace.com for your free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash peterdraws to get 10% off your first website or domain. But I have this little pen stand and then I can put this. All right. And hit it. Okay, so getting, getting good f infomercial promotional footage like that is harder than it looks. Uh, I'll give them that. Much respect to those people selling necklaces at 1 a.m. But uh, look, here's, here's what we're going to do today. I am going to try drawing on this while it's turning. Maybe the result will be interesting. These reservoir pens hold... Uh, way more ink than a normal pen would, but they it almost looks like I'm holding a tiny like a tiny glass of ink like a tiny chalice Care for a sip Okay, and then you screw this part onto here nice. There's a little o-ring in there Okay, it's looking pretty good I like how this pen looks. This little design here, the gold, <laughs> that weird little random jewel in the band. It's a bit <laughs> over the top, honestly, but it's fun. And then, I don't know, just like this weird clear part here I like. Feels good. See if I can get the ink flowing. There we go. Let it flow. Thank <laughs> you. 
Nice. Oh, I just realized that the little jewel on there is to keep it from rolling around as much. Because I think I did have a, a pen previously without it because it doesn't have like a clip on the cap or anything. And we are ready. We'll see what happens. All right. So this video ended up being far more difficult to edit than I intended it to be. I thought that it would be difficult to draw, right, on a spinning platter, and it did end up being very difficult to draw on a spinning platter, but I didn't think it would be so difficult to edit. What you're seeing now here is, you know, just some kind of footage at an angle, uh, and this is maybe some of the more easily visually digestible footage, but if you've watched my channel at all before, you know that I like kind of doing like fast little uh, time lapses of, m of me drawing, you know, like you can watch me drawing for two hours and I speed it up in, in, into five minutes or something, right? And so I thought, yeah, all I'll have to do is I'll have this footage of a spinning drawing and then I'll just spin the footage and then it'll be stationary. But it ended up being uh, much more complicated than that. Uh, first of all, I didn't have the camera d directly. Like, I think in order to in eliminate the slight, what ended up being a slight wobble factor, I'll call it, I would have had to have the camera pointing straight down at the middle of the platter, the overhead camera, which you'll see. I'm, I'll show you this footage in a second. Uh, I didn't have it there. And also, uh, apparently for Premiere Pro, which is the software I use to edit my videos, uh, you can only apply a, ro a rotation of 90 per clip. So I can only rotate each clip 90 times, and then I have to nest it and rotate it 90 more times. And apparently, in the course of this drawing, uh, the, the platter rotated about 225 times. So this is like a triple nested clip, and there's like uh, of me rotating the clip backwards as it spins forwards, or I should say, I had to rotate it counterclockwise as it spins clockwise. And uh, it would just all started looking really weird and trippy, like these weird rolling shutter effects. And I was downloading all these uh, weird programs from the internet, like Microsoft Hyperlapse Pro, and uh, which apparently you can't even buy anymore. Like their buy pages, anyways. The, those programs don't work at all for this. Anyways, what I'm trying to say is it was a really weird, it was much more difficult to edit than I than I planned on. What do they say? No plan survives contact with the enemy. And in this case, the enemy was uh, about two hours of spinning drawing footage. And uh, I'm not saying, saying any of this is any sort of complaint or excuse, but I think it was just interesting how how uh how difficult it was to well i don't know I, I try to make the footage watchable right and if i had just uh made it um i think you can see some of it here now if i had just made the the footage you know the actual drawing spin uh i i think you it would have been not watchable at all you would have been very dizzy i mean i was I was drawing on the platter. It was spinning slowly in front of me. And every now and then I would look, I had to take a lot of big breaks because I would, I would draw for a little while. The only thing I can compare this to is maybe trying to pet a dog that is constantly running in a circle around you. Uh, but maybe there's several dogs running in circles around you. And you either have two choices. You can either try to pet one dog and you can spin in a circle petting that one dog as it runs around you, or you can stay in the same place, face one direction, and just pet each dog for one second as it goes by. That was the kind of the two approaches I took with this platter as it turned, right? I would either try to follow a spot on the paper as it went around the circle, or just kind of draw in each spot for one second, like one or two pen strokes as it went around. And it kind of meant that like, I couldn't rest my spot, rest my hand on any spot on the paper for very long. And 
Uh, unfortunately, I think it's still pretty dizzying to watch because my hand is still spinning around the paper and it, like that wobble factor I talked about. And uh, I could, my, my line quality just went down the trash. Like, And then I would, I would be drawing for a while. It wouldn't be that bad as I was looking down at it. But as soon as I looked up at anything, my whole vision would start to swirl. Uh, kind of like how if you're on a merry-go-round or something, if you're spinning in an office chair or something, and then you stop, the world is spinning around you. But this time, my vision would be swirling, uh, I don't know, like like I was looking down a, a whirlpool. It's very, very odd. And uh, I had to take some big breaks because I was getting pretty, pretty motion sick there. <laughs> and... It, it would almost stop again. Like I would almost stop feeling motion sick if I started drawing again. I don't know. Maybe it's because I was like putting the key back in the keyhole, you know, like that's what my brain wanted. <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, it's a very interesting and frustrating way to draw a frustrating thing to try to edit. I think maybe, maybe in the future it'd be better just to not try to do a speed edit of something like that, of something spinning and then trying to, spin it backwards at the same speed uh maybe just maybe making little highlights you know like from the side would be better uh it was it's a good experiment though as far as experiments go you can learn just as much from failed experiments as from successful ones and i think it was successful in the in the sense that i liked the results of it uh but it was very difficult and unpleasant and difficult to turn into maybe a, a pleasant video to watch. But I don't know. So there are definitely ups and downs. It would be cool. Maybe it'd definitely be more watchable if somehow I could attach a camera physically to the platter and have that physically turning with it. But I don't know how I do that. It would also, if there was like an arm going up from the platter, that would get in the way. Like it would swing around and hit my hand. So Hmm. I don't know. Something to think about. It was definitely a very much different uh, kind of drawing sensation than anything I've ever done before. The the my paper running away from me, right? And I, and I could never really get used to the speed of the paper beneath my pen my pen nib because as you go closer or farther away from the center of the circle, it moves at different speeds because of what is it called? Like radial velocity or something like that. I'm sure there's some scientific or mathematical terms. So there's just so many weird little variables in there. It's just hard to get used to, but eventually I, towards this, towards maybe the second, third or second half of the process, I was getting a little bit more used to it. I was getting some little methods and I was figuring it out, but it was both frustrating and interesting. And, uh, I'm sorry if it makes any of you dizzy to watch this, but thanks for hanging out and watching. And uh, yeah, 